And welcome to the Minder Roundup. I am Mondo, the Monster Medina, along with my tag team partner. It is Chris Gomez. Chris, what's going on, brother? How are you today? I'm feeling great. Glad, glad, happy to be here, ready to talk some UTEP football, volleyball, soccer. Let's do it all. That's right. It is Minder Roundup, so let's talk about the, some of the stuff going on. We will get to the uh, football matchup that happened this Saturday. It was a sellout, but que okay, lastima. Todos abitadillos. So let's talk about some of the stuff that happened over the weekend. Of course, uh, the UTEP, uh, a lot of teams are in action. So congratulations to the UTEP uh, soccer team as they got a victory as they beat UNLV yesterday afternoon 1-0. to zero. So congratulations. Also, the UTEP rifle uh, team has a brand new coach, Andrea Palafox, a five-time All-American doing a decorated rifle career here at UTEP. So she is back at UTEP, and she is the new head coach for UTEP Rifle. So congratulations to her. But now let's talk about UTEP Volleyball, of course. Uh, the volleyball team split, uh, split Friday's doubleheader with a victory over Northeastern and then a loss against Northwestern. Uh, the team is now 2-1, and one, and they close out the Wild Wildcats Classic with a victory over Pacific in five sets so a reverse sweep there so uh we do have some uh stuff to play for the utep uh, volleyball team but first chris uh give me your quick impressions of the volleyball team coached by uh, coached by ben wallace i mean he's, he's ben wallace just he's a high energy guy like if you've ever seen him talk i i mean i i can understand how these ladies would want to play their hearts out for him because um, he brings it that team feeds off of them they're, they're just a great squad and i think um if you're not on the bandwagon yet um what are you waiting for you know like like go head out to memorial gym and and um, try and catch a game this season and speaking of games they're going to be playing this uh weekend here in the sun city it is called they're calling it the um borderland invitational the teams are going to be here at utep will be new mexico portland state south dakota so those are going to be some tremendous matchups. So all the ticket information is at utepminers.com or utepminers.com slash tickets. But uh, we got a chance to uh, catch up with some of these fine players. And, of course, our very own Asa Costa was able to uh, talk with Alyssa Sainz. So this is what she had to say. A couple of questions as to her here on the Minor Roundup. It's honestly a dream come true. I never thought I could play here at a Division One, and just with my family support behind me, it's just a, it's surreal too. They come to like every match. They're always there for me. So it's, it's something that I can't even describe. Like it's just a, uh, it's, it's just a, it's honestly just a dream come true. I love about volleyball is that what I love about volleyball is that when you're struggling in one in one thing, either serve or save, either digging, either serving, you can always make it up with something else. You can always find ways to contribute to making your team successful. Um, I would definitely say leadership. I when I first came here, I didn't even speak. I didn't even talk to anybody. I didn't. I, now I can, I can um, tell my hitters where to hit now. So it's just over time, I just gotten better at my leadership skills. Just showing El Paso, honestly, honestly, just showing El Paso what we're made of and what we can do this season. Come out and support us as we take on UNM on our 915 game. Picks up. And there you have Alyssa Sainz, El Paso's very own. And uh, she said it's a dream come true, Chris, to be able to play for UTEP. I know for a fact that uh, when we were in East Led, I don't know what sport you play, but I played basketball. So, of course, if, I, if it, by some miracle I would have been able to play UTEP, that totally would have been a, a dream to come true for me. But uh, I don't know about you. Did you play sports at East Led? I know, did You did wrestling, didn't you? What did you nah, do, brother? No, nah, I was a nerd, bro. <laughs> uh, I was okay. a skateboarder. <laughs> you're you're, you're a skateboarder and things of that nature but nonetheless yes, uh a uh, tremendous thing for for Alyssa there being able to uh play here in the sun city and speaking of that borderland invitational let's speak about the man himself the the man that is leading these young women into a tremendous season that is coach ben wallace uh, i'm proud 
crowd, I think our youth was exposed a little bit this weekend, and so that's a, uh, you know, you look over the whiteboard over there, things that we've got to continue to get better at is just to create a consistent um, system of communication and, and create a consistent ability to, to compete where we don't have peaks and valleys and lulls. And that's what cost us against Northwestern was during the moments of 22 all and 21 all and those things like that, uh, we faltered there with our, with our youth and our inexperience. And so I'm looking forward to, uh, I'm looking forward to, to continuing to develop that. And that's going to be tested Thursday, Friday, Saturday. It really will. What I will tell you is our identity is that we're nasty from the service line. We've got weapons everywhere. We have arms everywhere. You know, Sarah Pustachia was the freshman of the week um, for Conference USA, which is a really cool thing for her. But honestly, Torrance Lovesey could have probably been freshman of the week too because she put up giant numbers against uh, Pacific. And SP probably could have been Offensive Player of the Week putting up the numbers that she put up this last week. Ali Darley could have been Defensive Player of the Week with the block numbers that she put up this weekend. I mean, we've got, we've got weapons everywhere. So our identity, our identity is that we're kind of a chameleon. I mean, we can make changes to our color against whoever we need to play, which is really exciting for me, but also doesn't let me sleep very well at night. Absolutely, we need you here. We need you here. Uh, win, lose, or draw, which you can't draw in volleyball, but win, win or lose, you're going to be excited when you come here and watch us play. This is an extremely exciting team. Uh, we've got youth and talent and veteran everywhere. Anything you want to watch in a college volleyball match will be here this week, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, including the matches that we're not playing in. South Dakota playing UNM and, and uh, Portland State playing South Dakota and UNM is going to be exciting volleyball, so get your butts in these stands. We need you here. Uh, we want it to be a nasty home environment. We've changed our gym. Our gym is all rebranded now. We got all kinds of volleyball, uh, you know, real college volleyball stuff in here now. So we want to see you guys here and cheer us on. And that was UTEP Minders coach Ben Wallace and, and, and Chris. What tremendous camera work there is. You can tell uh, the uh, that's the new stuff they've got in the uh, Memorial Gym, how awesome it looks there. And the congratulations to them because they've done a good work. And like I said, this Borderland entertain this Borderland Invitational is going to be huge because of the teams that Coach Al Wallace talked about. But believe it or not, he's a, a man that's coached, and of course the minors have beaten NMSU, but he also wants to beat uh, New Mexico, and he wants to beat them bad. Uh, so the, in the, the clips that you heard from were from practice today, but then later on in the afternoon, he actually showed up to the uh, press conference after a coach demo talked about that, and he told a very interesting story as to why he wants to beat uh, New Mexico real bad. Oh, it's a big deal to me. I'm I'm one of the only humans I know that have coached at all three universities. So I coached at UTEP, at UTEP now, obviously, UNM and New Mexico State. And so I've been a part of this riot, rivalry in I-10, I-25, whatever you want to call it, the borderland rivalry, okay, with uh, UNM and New Mexico State and UTEP for a long time. Uh, and beating New Mexico State twice last year was probably part of the best part of our journey uh, because of where I've come from and how much, uh, you know, camaraderie and friendship I still have with a lot of people there. John and I are good friends. Uh, but at the end of the day, when this starts, I just want to beat the mess out of UNM because I can't stand seeing their, their, their colors. I can't stand seeing the Lobo howl and the woo woo that just drives me nuts. And I work there, you know, so um, it's important to me. It's important to my team. Uh, and it's really important that we send the message that we're the best team in the region because recruiting wise, we're recruiting Albuquerque kids. We're, we're trying to steal Albuquerque kids out of their backyard. And to do that, you got to show that you're better than them. And so that's really important to me. And there's Ben Wallace and <laughs> Chris. How could you? How can you not love that guy? That guy's amazing. I love that guy. Yeah, he wear, he wears his emotions right there on his sleeve, man. And I hate the Lobos too. You know, I, I had to spend three years in Albuquerque. Went to all the all the times that miners played them in the old whack up there. And uh, I mean, um, you know, uh, Albuquerque people, um, don't take this uh, the wrong way, but I mean, like, I can't stand you all. You all are the worst fans. <laughs> you all are rude. Yeah, anytime um, the miners are. Even when the Chihuahuas or the locals wipe the floor with you all, I love it. Yeah, and like I said, don't forget, so you can support the, the UTEP Miners volleyball team this Friday. The uh, Borderland Invitational begins 
at Memorial Gym. You can get those tickets at UTEP Miners at utepminers.com or utepminers.com slash tickets. So remember, support the UTEP Miners Athletics. Uh, uh, everybody always, always just wants to talk about the football, but don't forget about the other sports, soccer, rifle, and, of course, volleyball as well. So now let's talk about football. The UTEP Miners football team, they – um. Played this Saturday, as, as you can tell, I'm trying to, how to say this nicely on um, what what transpired on Saturday when they took on the North Texas Mean Green. The uh, people from Vegas had this as a pick em, you know, and one of the things that I harpered on that, by the way, pick em means that they, they don't really know who's going to win. And I think the line was, was the line maybe a kickoff, maybe... Yeah, one they, point in was, favor uh, of UTEP, or was it North yeah. Texas? No, no, in favor of North Texas by a point and a half. A point and a half. Much. Instead, uh, North Texas wins by a score of 31 to 14. Uh, 31, right? 31, 14? 13, 31, my bad. 30, 13, 13. That's right. They weren't able to score that second touchdown. So basically, I don't really want to harp on everything that happened because I know a lot of people are pressing the panic button. And I, I honestly, for myself, I'm not pressing the panic button. It's just a, a disappointment. And, and Chris, like the story that you wrote that you can read right now on EPSportsNetwork.com, the Miners blew missed opportunities. You know, they've had missed opportunities. You know, I had that so many times. Um, realistically, they should have been up 17-0 to at the end of the first quarter. And then they got a big uh, turnover towards the last two minutes. What did I tell you? Remember some of the things that I talked about last last week in the preview? I talked about the last two. For me, the biggest thing was going to be the last. One of the biggest things I was going to be looking for was the last two minutes of each half. And the Miners did something good. They created a turnover. You know, I thought it was going to be, oh, no, here we go again. Nothing good happened in the last two minutes. They created a turnover. Yet at the nine, and congratulations to Praise getting that uh, fumble recovery. But the Miners weren't able to capitalize it. You know, I think uh, Coach uh, Demo kind of um, admitted today that Gavin was a little bit um, uh, conservative on his on his throws. And I don't blame him because you don't want to throw any interceptions, you know. So, But at the same time, you, you got to give a lot of credit to uh, North Texas because at halftime, it was 14-13, to right? It was 14-13, right? Uh at halftime, it was a totally different North Texas team because, let's be real, the Miners dominated the first quarter. They just couldn't score touchdowns. Field goals, not touchdowns. Remember, that's what we don't want, but that's what we got. We got one touchdown. Uh, I thought the Miners were very aggressive. They went for it a lot on fourth down. I'm still talking about the first half. And then um, I think uh, North Texas made some tremendous adjustments, and they just were ready to play in the second half. And honestly, I think UTEP was not. UTEP came out flat. And the second half, how do you see? How did you see this game go? Yeah, I mean, it was just basically. I don't want to say failure to launch because UTEP moved the ball really, really good from the twenty-five to about the thirty-yard line all night long. It was just um, once they got to that thirty-yard line area um, of, of North Texas, um, failure to launch right there. Um, you know, they couldn't move the chains. They couldn't um, get anything going. There was a lot of uh, drop passes there that could have. Um, change the complexion of the day, game. I'm not just talking about that long one near the end of the half to Tyron Smith um, that was right in his hands, touchdown for sure, but also um, ones that would have just kept the drive alive. Um, you know, that changes the complexion of the game and, uh, um, you know, maybe you're able to run the ball a little bit more. It's never a good thing when um, Gavin Hardison's your leading rusher. Um, you know, you, you know, things aren't going well at that, at that at that point. You know, probably not the play calling that they want at that time, but that's what happens when you're playing from behind. So like I said, um, you know, one of the interesting things that Coach Dimmo said um, in the press conference, you know, he takes a look at the stat sheet. He's all, wow, like we punted one time mm -hmm. and we had one turnover. Yep. The rest of the time, you know, they had drives going and, um, you know, they just could not finish. It, it, it was mind boggling. So it wasn't like, like a game where they got blown out. You know, it, it's so cliche a lot of the time mm -hmm. when People say, um, you know, the game was closer than than it than the score would indicate, but the game was closer and then the uh, then the score indicated. You know, the stat sheets are basically identical, identical. You know, North, North Texas had a slight edge in rushing, UTEP a slight edge on, on throwing. Time of possessions about three minutes apart. Each team um, with a turnover. You know, what what it came down to is um, when North Texas got into the red zone, they punched it in. And UTEP couldn't do it, and they, they had to go for it a lot and fork down because they were playing from behind.
Yeah, and, and the way the way I look at it, Chris, is that you talk about some of the players that stepped up. The North Texas tight end came up big, especially in those third down situations there. He had a couple of big first downs and, of course, one of those big touchdowns as well for North Texas. So, like I said, North Texas adjusted. And, like I said, North Texas was the one that was able to – make the best of their opportunities the miners did not another thing that i actually talked about during the broadcast with tysher and cole freitag was that normally and this was one of my other things i was concerned about during the first game of the season is that penalties you know it's always you know it's always sloppy that first game is always sloppy with penalties because some of the players aren't aren't used to the formation you, you get a lot of offsides a lot of holding and that really wasn't the case, so I got to commend the coaches because they got the team ready when it came to that. You know, they're really, yeah, there are some flags thrown, but nothing like you normally see first game of the season, you know, or it becomes a talking point where I have to, like, bring it up to them. Or when Tysher has to bring it up, matter of fact, we we brought it up. It was like, hey, like, y'all did pretty good when it came to that. So, like I said, overall, in the first half, I thought the Miners played very, very well, you know, and we already said uh, second half, two totally different teams, you know, uh, but the thing that disappoints me the most is the thing that I talked about last week was because kind of like my man Eminem said, and I think I said this yes last week is you only get one shot. You get the one shot. You get the one shot with this city of El Paso to impress this team. Like I said, the marketing uh, uh, people did their job. You know, the 915 campaign, they did great. You got the helmet, you got the sticker, you know, some was sold out. Yeah. You know, you had a, and I don't want to hear about the lightning delay because both teams have to deal with that. And also remember, the Miners dominated the first half, so obviously it didn't affect them at all. You know, uh, everybody did their job. The marketing team, center did their team, but you can't control what the team does on the field, right? You know, you still got to go out there and play the game. The crowd did its job. The people, the DJ, whoever was spinning the tunes or whatever. Let me just say this, Chris. It was a fun atmosphere to be at the Sun Bowl. And that for me, that's the best word to describe it. Up until when they lost. Up until like honestly, I would say up until like maybe I think people realized this game was done with about maybe seven minutes left to go in the fourth quarter where, where UTEP couldn't punch it in. One of the times it went for in a fourth down and it, sh it should have been a, a pass that should have been caught and it was dropped. And that's when I looked up and that's when I saw people starting to leave uh, the Sumble. But up until that point, it was a fun atmosphere. I saw stuff that I've never seen before like during the game, of course, you saw the wave, but how cool was it to see the wave? During the the Journey song, I mean, I don't know, I don't know if it was Can't Stop Believing or whatever. Was they were playing a, was was it? And there was like they they took out the cell phones and they had a light on they had that the that the flashlight on the on the phone, so they're waving it and things of that nature. So I had never seen that during a football game, and especially not at the Sun Bowl. So you know, like, I mean. It was a fun atmosphere. The game was a fun atmosphere, you know. It's just, and the crowd was still into it, even though whatever happened at halftime, third quarter. Like I said, it wasn't until like maybe halfway, midway through the fourth quarter that I think the fans realized, okay, well, it's not going to happen today. We're out of here. But you know, like I said, that was my main concern: is the fact that if this team lays a goose egg, and let's be real, they did in the second half. They did. They weren't able to do anything in the second half. North Texas dominated that second half. They did. You know, they controlled the, they stopped the run. They forced them to pass. You know, Gavin was a little flustered, a little conservative, and North Texas did their job. And a lot of people like to rag on the North Texas uh, uh, QB, you know, because he's almost 29 years old. <laughs> you know, that's crazy. Uh, but I think he he was the uh, conference player of the week, offensive player of the week. And, I'm not, and you got to remember, too, North Texas is a good team. You know, they're one of the best – uh, rushing teams in the in the the league last year, uh, excuse me, in all of college football as well. So North Texas was no joke, and we knew this going in. But of course, when you have all this other stuff, I think what you saw in the first quarter, like realized, hey, this minor team can be like this. They just need to learn how to finish, and that's what I was talking about last week, Chris. They need to learn how to finish, and they have yet to learn how to finish. But the problem is that. You, you didn't learn how to finish in front of a sold-out Sumbo, and now it's going to be a while before that happens again because it's El Paso. I mean, that's that's how I see it, Chris. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I mean, first off, hats off to the um, media crew over at UTEP. I just see it getting, especially under Jim Sander, just getting better year after year after year. I think, um, you know, they're figuring out what makes El Paso tick, and, um, you know, they're, they're, they're making sure people have a good time. Like, all their stuff looks great. 
Um, you know, there's one little black spot on the jumbotron. I don't think you, you know, I don't know if that's because of the rain or what it was, but I, I mean, other other than that, I mean, just great atmosphere, like you said. So, you know, um, the interesting thing about this game is it's one that I can't really put on Dana Dimmel and the coaching staff. You know, I, I think they called a very uh, a very good game. You know, they they um, they did some different things. There was that that nice little uh, um, jet sweep um, to get the ball into Tyron Smith's hands and kind of switch it up. You know, they were getting um, junk plays on offense. The defense, I was a little surprised that they weren't able to get into the backfield a little bit a bit more and get off the block on the rushing. But, you, you know, like you mentioned North Texas, they're, they're one of the best running teams in the country. So, you know, it, even though they got their yards, it wasn't like, you know, like they broke it off like Sincere McCormick did um, with UTSA, you know, when they came into the Sun Bowl that year and just punched us in the mouth. So, um, you know, like I, I, I this one I do put on the players. You know, I, I, I put it on the players and, and we'll see what kind of leadership, um, you know, um, Gavin and the crew have, you know, guys like Braze, if they're able to, you know, maybe have a team meeting and say, like, you know, this one's on us, guys. You know, yeah. let's go out there and show everybody who we are. And now it's going to be tough, Chris, because now, you know, you've got a uh, top 10 team uh, traveling to Norman, Oklahoma, taking on the Oklahoma yeah. Sooners. And before we get your thoughts on that game, Chris, let's hear what Coach Dimmel had to say as he previews the um, the Oklahoma game that's going to happen this Saturday on national TV. You know, they got a lot of uh, talented players. Um, they're, you know, obviously their quarterback. I've followed his career from when he was at Central Florida. I think he's one of the best players in college football. That's their, you know, that's their number one weapon. He's been with their coordinator before. At, at, pre, at Central Florida, and so they have a history together, and and um, they're just um, got talented wide receivers, got a big physical offensive line, got a running back that's had really uh, good production on defense. They have some fr front guys that have quite a bit of experience. Their secondary is probably secondary linebacker is their most experienced unit there. A lot of a lot of uh, guys have played quite a bit in the secondary coming back. And uh, so, again, it'll be a difficult task for us, but it'll be a fun test and, and one that, uh, as you know, you never know when your team's going to rise up to the challenge after not playing as well as we know we can play week one. Maybe we put our best game out there on the field in week two. Well, I mean, anytime you play a top 10 team like this and you're a group of five team, I think that's part of the mentality that you take. I mean, no one's expecting you to win the game, but if you could win the game, it'd be really a big step for, for your program. And so you do go into it with a, a mentality uh, of, that hey if we can pull off a victory it would be really a big big thing for our program and so that's that's how we look at it more than anything is just a great opportunity for us to go showcase and then it's also an opportunity to play against really high level talent and continue to improve as a football team and continue to improve on how, how we execute and how, how we do things so that to me that's the the biggest thing I mean I think they'll have the same type of mentality that they had when Bob was there right that I mean when they had Bob as a defensive coach and and I think they'll have an aggressive mentality Mentality. I mean, Brent's just a really aggressive person. Now, when I say aggressive, I'm not talking about schemes. I'm just talking about the way they play and and, and how they'll how aggressive they'll be and what, and they'll play with a lot of energy. I mean, it's going to be it's going to be a really tough environment, guys. You're you're going to a game where you got a first time head coach, right? And their first game of the season. And so I think the team their team will play with a lot of juice and a lot of energy. And uh, I think you know Brent will do a great job, and I think he'll bring a lot of passion to that to that program. There's so much motivation for us to, to play well just because I think it'll get confidence into our football team. That's the motivation. And then obviously if we can play them well, it'll just put a lot of respect on our program um, to, in, in, a type, in a more national type of setting. You know, and because uh, we're going to be on a lot of TVs on Saturday afternoon, so to be able to play well and and, and battle and, and and make it a, a hard fought football game would be a, a really neat thing for the program. And those are the comments of UTEP uh, football coach Dana Demo. And the one thing I do like, Chris, is that he's being very honest. You know, very honest. A lot of people don't expect him to win, especially with what happened. Last week here at the Sun Bowl, we talked about the North Texas game. It was a pick em, maybe towards the game. Maybe North Texas was maybe a point and a half. Well, for the Oklahoma game, add 30 points to that. Uh, UTEP is, a, uh, as of right now, a 31-and-a-half point underdog against Oklahoma in Norman. Brand-new coach. You know he's going to coach. Coach Dimmel just said he's going to be very, very aggressive. Talking about the new head coach, I mean, because... 
it's going to be a tough task on Saturday, man. And let's be real. But I, I, one of the things I did like that Coach Jim will say is that like it'll be opportunities to uh, these guys to see uh, that type of level and see where they're at, especially mentally as well. Yeah, definitely the hardest game of the season they'll have all year. It's going to be on national TV on the Fox. So. I, I mean, you know, it's a chance. If you're a UTEP player, you got to be excited about that being on national TV. Maybe play a little bit harder. But I, I, I mean, um, l let's not kid ourselves. You know, that, that um, you know, they're going they're going in there against a juggernaut of a football team. Brent Venables, um, he's he was Clemson's defensive coordinator. He won national titles with Clemson, you know, was one of the only teams that could break through and beat those teams from the SEC, Alabama. Um, you know, he, he he's he's um, beat them twice, you know, with his, his defensive scheme. So he's going to go over there to Oklahoma. And like you said, he's, he's just going to want to make an impression. And, you know, UTEP, um, they're almost going to be looked at as a sacrificial lamb, I feel like. But, you know, hopefully, um, you know, they'll surprise us and Coach Dimble will, um, will, will have them coached up and ready. And, you know, the, the, and we'll see some things that we're happy with that, that can carry over and build some momentum. You got New Mexico State. You got, you got both New Mexico teams coming in. Yep. So not not to look past Oklahoma, you know. Uh, I know you gotta go over there. Programs like UTEP, they have to play these games in order for yeah. them to work. You know, yeah, it, 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 yeah. it's it's just the nature of the beast. You know, it is what it is. Yeah, it is what it is. It's what people call the money game. You go out there and take care of business versus Oklahoma. What what I mean, take care of business. Go out there and uh, try your best, and more importantly, try not to get anybody injured. You know, uh, but you never know. I mean, I'll be honest with you. The last time the Miners played Oklahoma. I uh, hear at the Sumbo, I remember good old J.R. Ross, you know, being on the sidelines and things of that nature. And the Miners were in that game. They were in that game, you know. I mean, it wasn't until like maybe the third quarter that Oklahoma pulled away. Matter of fact, I think it was more like the fourth quarter because I remember Oklahoma, Oklahoma had a lot of people on the sidelines. And I remember them looking at me and they're like, y'all should have won that one. And that's what they t said. But then again, totally different team. About maybe ten years ago, I can't remember exactly when it was when the yeah. Oklahoma played here at the Sun Bowl, you know. But it was a long time. That ran all over them. You yeah, know, uh, uh, that that was um, like a breakout game for him. You know, yeah, just, he, he he was shining that season, and UTEP's running game was clicking. Yeah, you know, and 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 the run is like a great way to you know play a team like Oklahoma because yeah. keeps the defense off the field. But uh, uh, you know, the, the run was kind of limited against North Texas, so uh, yeah. we'll see. You know. You know, hopefully maybe somebody like Dion or Ronald will, will you know, want to have that kind of a game, you know, and, and really put it out there. So, um, yeah. you know, it's time to shine on Fox. Yeah, time to shine. And I uh, want to congratulate our, our very own Slade Indian, uh, Ray Flores, for having a tremendous game this past Saturday. They're at the Sumble first time ever in his career, uh, having over 100 yards receiving. So congratulations to Ray. Uh, but... You know, they just call it like it is, Chris. It's going to be a tough task. You know, it's going to be a learning experience. You have two learning experiences. One that we really thought that um, we're going to try to find out what this team was and now a learning experience of playing like in front of a big crowd, you know. And they really shouldn't be that intimidated, you know, to be in a, in a big crowd. It's more of a situation that you might be intimidated by the logo and the stadium, you know, because of all the history with that team, you know, but either ways, you know, as long as you go out there and, and um, have a respectable outing, you know, that, that, that is, uh, you know, a realistic outing, you know, for me, just don't get injured and go out there and do your best against a, like a juggernaut, a team that's probably going to compete for a national championship. That's how I see it. Yeah. Yeah. They're definitely a playoff team. You know, um, that it, this is their swan song in the big 12. So in reality, UTEP's playing a top-tier SEC team. Yeah, you know, they're getting ready to make that move. So, um, you know, you 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 really, if I, if I'm a minor player like Ronaldo Flores, you know, I, I'm looking at this as an opportunity. You know, I want to make mm -hmm. a name for myself, for my program, for my city. You know, um, you you got you know the local guys, especially you got Dion out there that you know they've got this this unique opportunity. I stayed home. You know, I'm gonna um, show them what the 915 is all about and. Um, you know, hopefully we get some moments here, you know, like, like, I'll, I'll be happy with that, you know, some moments, uh, you know, for them to make some good plays, you know, it's not a turnover fest, you know, you, you, you might, you might lose the game, but you come out, you know, with, with an experienced squad and, you know, some confidence, like we played that well against Oklahoma, you know, no, nobody we face going forward is going to be that good. 
I agree with you, Chris. So for Chris Gomez, I am Mondo the Boss from Dina. Thanks so much for spending some of your time watching the Minor Roundup right here on epsportsnetwork.com. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching. This has been a presentation by the El Paso Sports Network. Follow us at www.epsportsnetwork.com.